Good morning, Circle J. We're doing this a little bit different this morning, so I can get out the way so we can get Miss Sandy Dickey up here in a little bit. So uh, if y'all want to come on in, make your way in, find your seat, get seated, and uh, we'll get things rolling here. Just want to say welcome. If you're visiting with us for the first time, we are so glad that you're here this morning and visiting with us. Uh, we have a new website. Uh, you can go to cjcc.church and uh, bookmark that and put it in your bookmarks and put it in your favorites. That way it's real easy to find. You can just click on it and go to it real quick. It's got a couple of ways to give on there. Uh, also, we got text to give at 903-201-1944. Or you can go on that uh, website. It's got a give button on there uh, that you can give also. Uh, also on that website, there's a connect button. Now, if you want to get connected to Circle J, you can uh, click on that connect button, uh, fill out the information, and we have a no-hassle guarantee here at Circle J. We will not come knock on your door, and we will not give you a phone call, but we will send you a next-step letter of how to get connected with Circle J. Um, step one of the growth track, uh, learning more about CJCC, uh, saddle up and discover your purpose. So uh, y'all, if you've not been through Growth Track, uh, plan on staying for that. This will be the last one we do until August, September. Uh, we'll we'll uh, start it over again in September, but the month of July, we'll do the, uh, all four steps. Uh, serve day is July the 11th. Uh, this coming Thursday morning at 10 a.m., we're going to make up some gift bags to be able to pass out to the police officers and sheriff's offices uh, in the region. So if you want to help fill them bags, uh, please come by here Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Um, and help make them up. Also, Saturday at 8 a.m., meet here at the church. Our small groups are going to be going out and helping out uh, folks in the neighborhoods uh, and with different projects and stuff. So. Uh, remember one thing, we do a serve day once a year. Jesus did a serve day 365 days a year. So uh, please just make set aside one day to come help uh, your fellow neighbor uh, get something done around the house. Um, y'all stand with me. We're going to call up Sandy Dickey. She's going to come up here, and I'm going to get out the way. I know y'all heard me enough. Uh, but... This morning, we have the honor and the privilege of having Miss Sandy Dickey here this morning. So, y'all stand with me. Let's go into worship, and uh, let's get ready for this morning. Lord, I come to you, and Lord, I'm asking your blessings on today. And Lord, this morning, uh, just be with the service and walk in here and walk amongst us this morning, Lord. And Lord, be with Sandy, Lord, as she's bringing her worship. And, Lord, be with Brother Todd this morning, Lord, as he's bringing our message, that you fill both of them this morning with the Holy Spirit. And, Lord, this, this building just gets filled up with the Holy Spirit this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning. Man, I was so excited when I talked to Todd a couple of days ago, and he said, yes, we are still having church. And, yes, we are still going to have our building open. We are still going to worship and praise the Lord. So y'all join me as we sing this morning. this morning.
I'm telling you, this is the first time that we've got to travel and do ministry since this mess has started. You know, so many people have, are living in such fear and have such strong opinions about what they believe and going out and facing the public. But in Romans 8 and 38, it says that we are more than conquerors through Christ and that nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. And it says, for I'm sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, not anything else in all of creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of Christ and Jesus our Lord. Amen. It tells us in Romans chapter 8 that if God is for us, then who could ever be against us? You've got the only person you need on your side. 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7 says that we do not live in a spirit of fear, but that God has given us a spirit of power and self-control. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine.
Isaiah 43 is one of my, probably my most favorite chapter in the, in the Bible. And in verse 1, it says, Fear not, for I've called you by name. I've redeemed you. And you are mine. <laughs> he knows my name. With all that's going on in the world, the one person it didn't surprise was Jesus. He knew it before it happened. He prepared us before it happened. As Jesus was approaching crucifixion, he went to his father and he said, Daddy, are you sure that I need to go and die? And God the Father said, Son, I need you to go. And as he went to be alone to pray, he went back to the father and he said, Daddy, but are you sure? He said, if it's not, not my will, but your will, I'll go. And God the father said, Son, I need you to go. And even a third time, he went back to his father saying, Daddy, are you sure? How often do we as Christians, as children of God, when he's told us what to do, clearly in our mind we know that it's him, that we go back time and time again questioning his direction for our life because it's maybe not what we want to do in the moment. It's not comfortable for us. We go back and say, Daddy, are you sure? See, when God sent Jesus to save the world, when he was hanging on that cross of all of the things that he could have been thinking about, he was thinking about you. He was thinking about me. <coughs> Selfishly, I would have been thinking about me. I would have found a million reasons why that day, that moment, that task was not good for me. But Jesus went willingly and knowingly to the cross because he loves you and he loves me that much. And the cool thing is that he'd do it again today and tomorrow and the next day if that's what it took to get through to you, how much he adores you. I don't understand how God could send his one and only son. I just got one son. My son's adopted. We brought him home from the hospital when he was only three days old, and I'm all he knows for a mother. And I can stand before you today and say, I love you, but I'm not sending the only boy that I got because you're a sinner. I can't, I can't do it. I, I'm not strong enough. I don't have it in me. But Jesus, he went. And he never complained and he never backed up. And God said, it's okay, son, go ahead. This is what I've prepared you for. Jesus knows my name. He loves me so much he catches my tears and holds them. He knows how many hairs are on my head. And even when I push him away or maybe don't hold him as close as I could, he's always sitting right there just waiting for me to run back to him and jump in his lap. He loves me, no take backs. I pray that you choose Christ today and that you know that you have been redeemed, that he does know your name, that he's not gonna forget you, that he's got your name written on the palm of his hand. He knew just how the day would end. He went to pray in the garden. Feet and hands. 
1 John 4, 4 says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. It tells us in John 10, 10 that Satan roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Let's not feed him today or tomorrow. And John 16, 33 says, for I've told you these things so that you might have peace. For in this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world.
title of the message today is called We the People. We the People. We the people are going through a lot of pressure right now with COVID-19, with financial disaster in some areas. It's really bad when you got to put on a face mask to go to Tractor Supply. Come on, somebody. I mean, Tractor Supply. Me and Robin going in Tractor Supply, and I ain't going to tell you what Robin mumbled underneath her mask because she whooped the dog out of me, but she said something like, stupid face mask. <laughs> But then she said, I'll do it because it keeps people in work and because it keeps the country going, so I'll wear my stupid face mask. <laughs> so I don't know what you think your face mask is, but we're living in some hard times and, and struggles. And so what are we supposed to do? That's the question. How are we supposed to respond? What does God want us to be doing during times like this? And what is, how can we, with everything going on in our country, possibly even make a difference the scripture says in proverbs chapter 14 verse 34 turn there this kind of explains everything i think that's going on in our country the lord can do that real good in one verse proverbs 14 verse 34 it says righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a disgrace to many people righteousness exalts a nation but sin is a disgrace to many people. And so because there is so much disgrace going on in our country right now, it's because righteousness, those that are righteous, are very few that are standing right now. And so the foundations of America, we know, are under attack. So righteousness, the Bible says, exalts America when we do what's right. Sin disgraces America. Amen? And that's what we're seeing all over our country. July the 4th, 1776, our forefathers, our forefathers fathers carefully penned the Declaration of Independence. They gathered together in a lot of debate, a lot of prayer, a lot of uh, wrestling, and the Declaration of Independence was brought forth and gave specific instruction to us, we the people. Look at it. It says, We hold these truths to be self evident that all men are created equal, and that, that, that they are endowed by the Creator with certain unalienable rights, and among these are life and liberty and pursuit of happiness. It's part of the Declaration of Independence, July the 4th, 1776. And so what's so awesome about the Declaration of Independence is it supports individuals. You see, the Bible says over and over again that there, God is no respecter of persons. He doesn't hold favoritism to persons or to groups like our country is doing. And so we, the people, the, the, what's so awesome about the Declaration of Independence, it, it supports conscience and the Holy Spirit and us making our own Decisions as individuals, not as groups or, or, or things that's going on in the country. And so we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. The signers of the Declaration of Independence were godly men. It was believed that some 54 of the 57 people that signed the Declaration of Independence, if I've got that right, were Christians. They were godly men. Many were even pastors. And they were educated men in the Word of God. They weren't ignorant men like what's in America today that don't study the Bible. They knew the Word of God. And so when the Declaration of Independence was penned, it, it wasn't put together for laws for men. They were taking God's law and penning it in a way we could understand. If you look at Acts chapter 10, in verse 34, we see how these, these, uh, these scriptures, they, they were declared in, in this. And it says, all men were created equal. If you look at that in, in uh, Acts chapter 10, verse 34, it says, And then Peter opened his mouth, and he said of the truth, he says, I perceive the God that there is no respecters of persons. If you look at Romans chapter 2, verse 11, it says the same thing. It says, For God does not show favoritism. 
And you can keep reading all over the Bible in 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 14. 2 Chronicles 19, 7. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 9. It goes on and on. And then Matthew chapter 22, verse 39. It says, says we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves." And so this is where secular government got it all wrong years ago. And we see this gravitational pull that Satan's causing in our country right now to take us right back to where we used to be. You see, there was the American Revolution and the French Revolution. And in the American Revolution, we said that all men were created equal. In the French Revolution... They said, no, liberty, equality, and fraternity. They were into groups. They were into all this hate crime, just like it's happening today and trying to take our country backwards to where it was, where the Declaration of Independence was created to set things straight and our country be set aside from us. And so these 54 of the 57 men that signed the Declaration of Independence were educated men in the Word of God, and they brought this about. And our sins, but our sins right now as a nation are a disgrace to us. Amen? Amen. The sins of our nation are a disgrace to us. So I'll say it again. What's the big question of the day is how in the world can we make a difference in everything that's going on? How are we supposed to be responding today to what's going on in our country? How is our response going to make a difference when our nation, when the disgrace of our nation is on television and over everything that you can possibly read and going on in our country this July 4th weekend? So how, how can we make a difference in the four states region? in Cass County, in Bowie County, in, in Little River County, and in Miller County? How can we make a difference in our homes, in our region? God tells us very clearly, and I want you to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12 begins to spell out the way we're supposed to respond to this right now. Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. It says, love must be, what's that word? Sincere. It means it's got to be real. Love must be sincere, hate evil, and cling to what's good. I love the way this paraphrases it in the message translation in Romans chapter 12, verse 9. It says, love from the center of who you are. It says, don't fake it. You can't fake love. Run uh, for dear life from evil and hold on for dear life to good. He says, love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it and run for dear life from evil and hold dear to, for dear life was good. Run for dear life. You can't fake it. So love is supposed to be the center of who you are. And I'm here to tell you, if you don't have the Holy Spirit in you, if you're not born again, it'd be real easy to grab somebody's head and twist it off nowadays. Amen? Did y'all ever used to do that when you, was, you tried to? Am I the only fool that's running around? There's one sitting right there. I know I ain't going to mention no names. But, man, I tell you what, when we didn't have Christ, and I don't, if you're here today and you don't have Christ in your life, I'm going to tell you, He'll make a difference in you today. Before you leave this place today, I'm going to give you an opportunity to meet Jesus Christ like I've met him. He's changed me from the inside out. But love comes from the inside out. It's not something you decide. There's no way you can possibly fake it. And so what do we need to do? How do we love? What's this supposed to look like? Real simple is this. Look at this. Don't fake love. Do it. Amen? Amen. We can't say it. If we're really going to make a difference in the four states region, we can't fake it. And I think sometimes fake it is y'all come to Cowboy Church or y'all come to our event or y'all come to this. We love you. And no, that's not what Jesus didn't say. Y'all come. He went and he stayed out on the streets and out in the country and out, uh, with people. So we can't fake it. And so it says love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. So what does sincere love look like? What do we need to do? What does sincere love look like? Jesus answered this question, and he was sitting down with his disciples. 
And they're saying, you know, what does this look like? What are we, how's it, how are we supposed to respond? And Jesus is telling them, he says, y'all, I'm fixing to go to a place and you're not going to be able to go with me. Now, I don't know if you've ever lost one of your kids and, and, and the horror of that. They're thinking, oh, my goodness, I'm going to be without my spiritual daddy. How am I going to make it without my spiritual daddy? And this is, they, they were saying, he said, hey, what I'm fixing to do, there's, there's going to be some troubled times. And so where is, where is he coming from? And he says, there's going to be hard times in this deal. If you look at John chapter 13, verse 34, Jesus, he says here, he says what we're to do while, we're, while this is going on in our life. John chapter 13 and verse 34. When you get it, let me hear you say, I got it. The rest of y'all looking at it on your phone or your iPads or you're looking at it up here, whatever it is. Look at it. John chapter 13, verse 34. He says, he says, the new commandment I give you, and here's what we're supposed to do. This is Jesus making things simple for us. He says, love one another. How? As I loved you, so you must love one another. How did Jesus love you? He loved me recklessly. There was nothing in it for Jesus. There was nothing in it for Jesus. As a worthless gum, there was no benefit for Jesus. He loved me recklessly, without regard of what I'd done or who I was. There was no justification in his love that he spent for me. He loved selflessly. It wasn't anything about him, and he loved sacrificially all the way to the point of death. So why does he uh, want us to do this? Why is Jesus explaining this? Why is he saying during this time in our country and whatever's going on, why are we supposed to love from, from within? Why are we supposed to love one another? What's the big deal? And he explains why. Jesus explains in verse 35. Look at it. And he says, and by this, this is why he wants us to do it. Everyone will know you're my disciples if you love one another. You see, our, our ministry is determined. If we're going to reach and people for the gospel with the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's not going to be because we got big fancy buildings or 32 acres out of here, half, or an indoor covered arena. Or it, it's not going to be because all the fancy music and all the fancy preaching. Ain't no fancy preaching around here, but they're showing us some fancy music today. <laughs> it's not going to be because of all that. Jesus is saying, no, they're going to know you. You're going to make a difference because... You love one another. They'll know us by our love. And so if we're going to reach people, we can't just say it and we sure can't fake it. We've got to do it. Amen? That's what the Lord wants us to do. We've got to do it. So that's why we're doing Serve Day on July 11th, next Saturday. That's why we're doing Serve Day. That's why we're shutting the world down around us and going to come up here. And we've been working. People have been putting things together for police officers. People have been putting projects together to work on people's ranches or people's barns or people's homes or people's yards and small groups. Uh, well, that's why next Saturday we're going to let the world know that we love them. And not only that, there's going to be churches all over the country that are serving on the same day. Hmm same day so it's not just little circle j cowboy church over here in arkansas trying to make a difference there's people all over the country going to do it on the same day and we're praying that god use us as the church to make a difference nationwide to help people and for us in the four states region as we put together these 400 to 500 care packages and pray over every one of them there's businesses have got involved and, and have donated uh, meals for these police officers and we're going this poster is at the back it's on that table back there if you have not signed it and put a prayer on this is the last chance you got to do it sign that poster sitting back on, the, on that table up by the church office put a prayer on there get in there and that we're going to put that in pictures we're going to reproduce it it's going to be hanging up in police departments all over three counties. 
And so you get involved. I'm, it's my encouragement that, that we make a difference. You contact your small group. Say, hey, what are the projects we're doing? If you're helping with the police uh, appreciation, and that's fantastic. If you're doing projects and going mowing people's yards or ranches, if you can start with what mine or whatever. No, don't do that. <laughs> you're not serving the preacher today. You're serving people that ain't, are far away from God. And so, uh, so what are we going to do? We're going to stop. If we're going to love people, if we're going to do it and, and not fake it, we've got to stop. Y'all with me? Stop means maybe next Saturday you change your plans going to watch a rodeo. Or next Saturday you change your plans going fishing or whatever it may be. Next Saturday, let's shut the world down so we can love. Don't fake it. Say you love them. Go do something else. Y'all hear me? One Saturday out of the year. I realize some of us can't do it. There ain't no reason why we can't scatter all over these four counties around here and prove that we love them. Prove that we love people. And so it's a great opportunity. Jesus said, by this, everyone will know that we, Circle J Cowboy Church, are his disciples. They'll know us by our love. So please don't miss this opportunity. Please don't miss this opportunity. As we reach 60 for the next 12 months, as we try to get into 60 cities, areas, towns around the four states region with small groups in whatever way we can, as we send out our chuck wagons, as we send out our bands, as we send out working with kids and setting up even rodeo events or whatever it may be in these every other areas, and not just asking them to come here, as we do whatever we can to serve people in 60 areas and communities around the four states region, it's going to happen, and we're going to reach people if we recklessly love them. Jesus recklessly loved me. My daddy recklessly loved me. And you've been around here very much. You know my daddy got killed when I was seven years old. He said, how can you say your daddy recklessly loved you? I don't understand how... You can remember so much. Y'all look here. So many details from the time you're seven years old and down. Now, there's some details that your seven-year-olds down have, are seeing maybe in your life. I'm just telling you, they're remembering everything going on in your home and everything you're saying and everything you're doing. Now, I'm going to give you some details of things I remember about my daddy. My daddy loved me. But I, I don't really necessarily, I, I remember him telling me he loved me. But that's not why I'm saying he loved me. My daddy loved me because he drugged me in every sale barn and he was an order buyer. And every cell barn I hit the ground at, he gave me two quarters. And I went and bought me a little short 12-ounce Coke and a honey bun. Come on, somebody. Can I have a big amen? <laughs> Any honey bun fans? My kids love honey buns. <laughs> That's a genetic deal. I like honey buns. Back in the day, you didn't have all that choice, you know. <laughs> He'd buy me all the bull whips I could tear up. And back in the day, all they had was Hereford cattle and Angus cattle is what we raised. And they were pretty easy. And my daddy, he would teach me how to work cattle as a little old bitty kid. I did everything with him. And he would send me at the end, we'd be sorting stuff out to, to get shipped to, the, to a place. And he would send me in there and give me tag numbers and say, get this this calf right here, I would work the gate and he'd send me in there if he wouldn't run over the top of me as a little kid. And I'd reach over and I was pretty handy with that little whip. I'd pop him right in the head and give him their attention and come on around. And my daddy, he'd take me to eat with all the cowboys. And how I know he loved me is he bragged on me. I remember my daddy talking about me stepping out in the middle of the alley and stopping the yearling that got past all of them and saving the day, getting him, keeping him, and he'd tell the story. 
I know my daddy loved me because he put me on his back. And he'd carry me duck hunting. And he'd find a he'd find a beaver dam or a beaver hut somewhere. And he'd set me on dry and we'd duck hunt together. I know my daddy loved me because he would take me deer hunting with him all the time. And he'd lay me down behind a hill and lay a blanket down there and bring me something to eat. I know my daddy loved me because he whooped me. You think, that's funny. No, I'm serious. I don't ever remember my daddy whooping me. I remember him whooping me quite a bit. <laughs> but I don't remember him whooping me and being mad. I knew why I was getting whooped. And I knew better what I did. And he sat down and explained to me why I was getting whooped. And then he whooped a fire out of me. And he'd leave me all by myself crying in that room. When I'd stop crying, here come my daddy again. He'd pick me up. That's where he'd tell me he loved me. He'd pick me up, put me in his lap. And he explained to me again why I didn't ever need to do that again. I'm used to it. And here's my point. I don't remember my daddy telling me that he loved me. I remember my daddy's love for me by what he did for me. You know what? That's all this world needs right now is for you and me to tell them that we love them. That's what they need. That's all they need. We don't need to say we love them, Circle J Cowboy Church. We need to get off our tail and do it, and not fake it. And we got a chance this week to make a difference. I used to say, and me and Homer say this, that we tell cowboy churches that the number of souls you reach is going to be determined by the number of hoof prints you got in your arena. You know what? I don't think that's true anymore. I have people go through this arena for years and years and years and never accept Jesus Christ. You know what the ones that do accept Jesus Christ? Because somebody loves them. And they followed you in here and accepted Jesus Christ. I think it's time. We're too stinking busy to love people. Amen or old me? One of the two. We're too busy. Did y'all hear what I said? We're too busy. We're too busy. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads before God. And I know that maybe you like me you've been so busy you got all this stuff you got going on you ain't done one thing for anybody in the last few months to tell them you love them you, you busy but you ain't done nothing that would make someone want to come to Jesus Christ you ain't done one thing for somebody to want to come to church with you because you've done something to help them Jesus jumped out in the middle of people's lives and helped them with their problems may be that you need to repent you need to repent for, and just say God I know I've been busy I've been so busy I ain't been doing anything to tell them I love them and you say we're to love people that they'll know us by our love and so nobody knows that I know Jesus because I ain't been loving nobody and I ain't been telling them about you and I just, you just say God today in the name of Jesus will you forgive me Ask him. Forgive me. Instead, you've been complaining about everything going on. May need to ask him to forgive you that. Lord, forgive me for griping and complaining. I need to put that energy. Give me the strength to put my griping and complaining about what's going on around me into love and making a difference for people.
say this. Say, Lord, would you give me the grace to love recklessly? Say that. Lord, would you give me the grace, the strength, the ability to love people recklessly? Still with every head bowed and every eye closed, you may be like I was. You're chasing the world. And it ain't made you happy yet. You know what? You're not here by accident today. The Holy Spirit's knocking on your heart's door. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if any man open the door of his life and ask him to come in, he said, I'll come into him and I'll sup with him and he with me. But Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Maybe today, if you were to die, you don't know whether you'd go to heaven or hell. And you know you need to get that right. You see, Jesus gave his life on a cross, paid for your sins. But the only way you'll ever get the benefit of that is if you give your life to him. He gave his life for you. Will you give your life to him right now? If that's you, I want to ask you to pray with me right now. Just say, Jesus, today. Between you and him, say, Jesus, today. I know there needs to be a change in my life. And I want to say thank you that you paid for my sins. You gave your life on the cross. But I have not given my life to you today. Because you gave your life for me. I now give my life to you. In the name of Jesus, tell him. Say, please forgive me of my sin and all the wrong I've done in my life. In the name of Jesus, please forgive me. Tell him this. Say, fill me with the power of the Holy Spirit save me from a devil's hell. In Jesus' name I pray.